Moderna holding its annual vaccines day, the company announcing multiple vaccine programs advancing to late stage clinical trials. Joining us right now first on CNBC is Stefan Bancel. He is Moderna's CEO. And Stefan, what are you going to be laying out today? What are these new vaccines? Well, good morning, Becky. Uh, we're very excited today. Uh, actually, I couldn't be happier because not only your respiratory vaccines are doing extremely well in terms of clinical data, but today we're unveiling a whole portfolio of positive clinical data for latent viruses, viruses for which, for some of them, there's nothing available to help people, like EBV, which has shown to lead to not only mononucleosis in the young adults, but that's, also... That's the Epstein-Barr virus, right? That's correct. But also, it seems to be a root cause for multiple sclerosis. So think about how we could change patient care if we could have people get a vaccine and not getting MS. That would be just an amazing impact for patients. But we've also showed uh, new data for norovirus. We have a lot of people you know, still dying of norovirus. There's no vaccine available on the market. Our data is very strong. In the phase one, two, we're going straight into phase three because we know the platform is working. If you think about the platform, now we have a COVID vaccine and RSV under re final review by regulators. You know, the flu is positive data. We announced yesterday our next-gen COVID vaccine also working. So if you think about it, the, 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 vac the vaccine platform is quite amazing. Compared to industry, you know, we have twice the success rate in phase one compared to the rest of vaccine industry. We have twice the success rate in phase two and around 80% of success in our phase three. And so we are investing aggressively to bring those important uh, medicine to patients. Stefan, I, I think it's really amazing, this idea of the platform and being able to bring things and be, have more success in the things that you're trying out. But the street is still um, a little doubtful of all of it. If you're looking at your stock, it's down 27 percent over the year, over a one-year period. That's because the vaccines for COVID, there's been less demand, there's been less government money to fund those things. I, I mean, you really have to prove to investors that this is going to be capable, your platform, of kicking off a lot more. What, what do you feel like, uh, do you feel like that message is getting through or not? I think every time a company does something that has not been done before, it is hard for some people to see what is possible. If you think about the numbers I just mentioned, you know, if you think about industry average, the success of phase three is around 60 percent, we have 80 percent. If you think about the phase one, we are twice as, as successful. This is new. This is a new platform. The speed at which we can move is new. So what is exciting now is with the launch of RSV this year and then the great data we had yesterday on the next-gen COVID, which combined with flu is going to give a single-shot COVID plus flu, that's going to help a lot. If you think about COVID, as you said, the market has come down in terms of demand for COVID, but the flu demand is three times bigger than COVID in the U.S. And so we think the combination of vaccines should help a lot. I mean, I think that's one of the bigger questions, too, is, is there vaccine hesitancy, at least in a certain part of the population, in the aftermath of, of COVID? Um, there's a lot of things that are still swirling, a lot of frustrations that certain areas have. I think coming out with more and more novel things to attack people, things or diseases that people hadn't thought about before, didn't think there was a solution to, is part of a big issue. Where do things stand right now in terms of what you can do uh, on the cancer front? So on the cancer front, uh, we're also very excited. As you know, I was with you on the show back in December. We're mm -hmm. now showing, you know, three-year duration of protection against uh, disease coming back or death. We have used Ketidra, which, as you know, is the best drug available today for skin cancer. And we are already starting enrollment in lung cancer. I've announced a couple more trials going for different tumor types. And so... We believe this is another place where we should be able to help a lot. So if you look at the portfolio of a company between respiratory vaccine and latent vaccine, so things like CMV and DBV we just spoke about, and cancer and then rare disease, the platform is extremely broad. And so I really think in the next 12 to 24 months, there's going to be a lot of product launches, a lot of successful fires free. And I think people are going to be able to see what this platform is capable the latent diseases, I mean, I, I think that's 
pretty interesting because we all know about the shingles vaccine that you can get. That's if you have exposure to the chickenpox vaccine when you're young, or chickenpox when you're younger. That virus lives on, and this is the same sort of story. A lot of these are are, are viruses that we've been exposed to when you're younger. It doesn't come back and impact you until you're older, under stress, maybe you're not well. That's what these entire group of, I guess, five vaccines are going after. That's correct, and you're 100 percent right, Becky. Latent virus. Uh, our viruses that we get exposed to, we get infected by mostly when we are teenager or young adults. And those viruses, some of them give you disease when you get them, like mononucleosis. If you get the EBV, the Epstein-Barr virus, you get mononucleosis disease as a young adult or a teen. But those virus, once in your body, they don't leave your body. And so over time, as you described, as we get older, as we get over health issues, those virus comes back. And that's a really big public health issue. There's a lot of disease, including cancer, that we believe are linked to those viruses being in our body and basically tiring our immune system. So one that everybody knows well is HPV. The, HPV, the right. virus. These are all herpes viruses. Correct. They're all herpes family viruses. But if you think about it, there's a, an amazing vaccine uh, to protect young people against HPV, but there's nothing for CMP. There's no vaccine available. There's no vaccine available for EBV. There's no vaccine available for HSV, the herpes virus that most people are familiar with. And so what Moderna is trying to do is to develop for our technology because we can deal with very complex viruses. Our CMV vaccine has six mRNA molecules in the vial because that's what is required to make the vaccine work. Are and so we going to be vaccines for kids, though? I mean, if these are diseases that you're, herpes viruses that you're usually subject to as a teenager or young adult, are these vaccines that you're going to be suggesting for kids, too? So we're going to suggest those for, for teenagers, a, a, a bit like HPV, to protect them before they get infected by the virus the first time. But also for EBV, for example, we're not only working on a vaccine that's called a prophylactic vaccine to be used before infection, we're also working on the treatment vaccine that would be used for people that are already infected. Because as we just spoke about EBV and the risk of uh, MS, we believe that people that are already infected by EBV virus, if you can keep their virus load, the copies of a virus in check, you should not have uh, sequelas like, like MS. There's also some cancer that seem to be linked to EBV. There's also, as you know, cases of long COVID that seems to be also linked to EBV reactivation in our body. So we think this portfolio of product is going to be really important to prevent people from being sick, including very, very dangerous diseases.